control what you say because they know that if you say it, nothing will ever be the same. And this is exactly why they hate Trump. The following video you're about to watch, you're going to see Tucker Carlson giving us a clear cut reason why Donald J. Trump is being persecuted, prosecuted over and over again. And it's amazing listening to how he simplifies this thing because oftentimes we fail to ask the question, what's the reason exactly you guys are doing this to this man? Even though we are sympathizing, his polls numbers are going up. But the truth of the matter is being in Trump position must not be an easy thing. It's good to really carefully think about what's happening here because the way Tucker Carlson puts it was spot on. Check out this video, link in the description below. Like and subscribe at the end. Have a good one. In the order. It's not just that it's nice to say what you think and that it's essential to human dignity to be able to express what you really believe, though that is true. You cannot be a full citizen if you can't say what you think. You are instead a slave. You are, if you're not allowed to say what you think, you are not a citizen, you are a slave. It's that simple. And you don't need physical shackles because you have them in your head already. So that is all true. But that's not why they're trying to control what you say. They're trying to control what you say because they know that if you say it, nothing will ever be the same. And this is exactly why they hate Trump. And it's not an endorsement of Trump, but it, it's just interesting since I've known, you know, I've watched the whole Trump saga and I've had various feelings at various times. I've been incredibly frustrated by Trump because honestly, who couldn't be? And then other times I've been totally inspired and excited. But the whole time I'm watching Trump, I'm thinking to myself, the core question which no one ever asks, which is why do they hate him so much? But honestly, why do they hate Trump so much? It's the talking, it's the talking. It's not because Trump's program is so radical. Are you joking? He'd be, if this were 1985, he'd be like a center left liberal. It's not radical at all. That's fascism. Are you joking? No. No, it has nothing to do with what he does. It has everything to do with the fact that for whatever reason, his brain is not entirely controlled by the people in charge. And because he's not entirely controlled, well, first of all, it tells you that everybody else is entirely controlled. If like Trump is the one they hate the most, like what did Trump do wrong? I mean, you can say, oh, well, geez, orange or whatever, okay, fine. But like, has he really committed a crime so severe that we should send him to prison for the rest of his life? That's insane. And half the Republicans in Washington, probably closer to about 95%, would be very psyched if he went to prison for the rest of his life. So why is that? I'll tell you exactly why. I know, because I've watched this really carefully from Washington for his entire term, and then the subsequent three years. They hate Trump because they fear Trump. And they fear Trump, not because of what he might do, but because what he might say. And at any moment, Trump might be autistic enough to tell the truth about what's actually happening. Whoa, wait, what's that? I was in DC when this started and Trump had the greatest line I've ever heard. And no one even noticed it except me because I spent my life in Washington, but he was in, having some debate and somebody said something about NATO, which is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, post-war to prevent the Soviets from invading Western Europe. And Trump goes, what's the point of NATO? And I remember thinking, what a stupid question. What's the point of NATO? Everyone knows the point of NATO. Like, the, it's to prevent the Soviets from invading Germany. But I was like, but there are no more Soviets. That ended in 1991. So like, what is the point of NATO? That's actually, then I was thinking to myself, because I had been living in DC, so I was like captured by the groupthink that does capture you if you live in a place long enough. I remember my wife who grew up outside Detroit being like, why would anyone buy a Japanese car? That's insane. You know, I mean, she just grew up here. To this day, she would never have a foreign car. Like, what? They can't really be better. You know, you just, you're a product of the world you live in. So I'd never thought of like, what's the point of NATO? And Trump said that. And I remember thinking, well, that's an entirely fair question. I'm sure there's a good answer. Anybody, anybody, no one can answer it. And instead they attacked him like he was Hitler. And I remember thinking like, why are you mad at him for asking what turns out to be a totally legitimate question? And maybe you've got a good answer. What is it? 
Uh, shut up! Oh, shut up. That's your answer, really? And it was that kind of thing. And it was the fear that he might say one of a thousand things that you're not allowed to say, which is pretty much everything at this point. And by the way, I'll stop at this and take our hostile questions, but if you want to know, this is, and I'm being completely sincere, what's true, the true things are the things that you can't say. I cannot remember the last time someone in public life 